Welcome to How I Raised It, the podcast that goes behind the scenes with entrepreneurs who've raised capital. We uncover the tips, tricks, and techniques they use to get investors to write a check. Strap in and turn it up. Hi, and welcome to How I Raised It, the podcast where we dig into how startups raise their capital. With me today is Jari Bolender of Lab Sensor Solutions. And uh, welcome, Jari. Thanks. I really appreciate uh, being on the show and looking forward to the discussion. He's coming from uh, where I'm at, San Francisco. So excited to be interviewing a neighbor. Um, but why don't we just start off with a pretty easy softball? Tell me about Lab Sensor Solutions. What do you guys do? And why'd you start this business? Okay, yeah. So um, Lab Sensor Solutions is a uh, sensor as a service company. Uh, we track the temperature and location of perishable items so they don't spoil. Uh, we have two primary markets, uh, healthcare and food. Uh, in healthcare, we track anything that could spoil in the healthcare system, like blood, tissue, urine, pharmaceuticals, vaccines, you name it, if, if it goes in and out of your body and it can spoil, uh, we use our sensor platform to track it. And then on the food side, we track and help ensure that fresh food is fresh and not spoiled. So milk, vegetables, meats, seafood, anything that you know could go bad if not held at the proper temperature. Interesting. My my wife would love you. I am notorious for uh, eating things well beyond the expiration date, and I've even been known to <laughs> to go pull something out of the trash that she's thrown away. Uh, some leftovers that I was still hungry oh, for. Oh no! And I don't. I, f I figure it builds resistance in my immune system if I'm you know eating things that are uh, maybe on the edge. But who knows? Um, very good. So let's talk about raising capital. So you've raised, uh, what, about a million and a half? Is that correct? Or a little over a million from lab sensors? A little over a million, correct. A little over a million. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, we, we chatted briefly about this, but it's an interesting mix. So why don't you tell us the, the players that came in on your round? You had a mix of some accelerators, some friends and family. And this is why I love these types of talks because, you know, you pull 100 startups and they've raised money 110 different ways. So I, I like uh, the, the diversity here. So yeah. tell, me, tell me about how you, you know, who came in on your own? Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, you know, we had a mix of uh, friends and family individual angels and accelerators. Um, and so, you know, we we did what's called a series seed, S-E-E-D round, which is before A and between friends and family. I mean, if if some of the people listening are, are old school at raising money, you know, it was the original series A <laughs> back in the day when, yeah. you know, 14 slides of PowerPoint would get you a million bucks. Uh, that's not the case anymore. So right. um, we we were at two accelerators, uh, 500 startups, and Launchpad Digital Health since we were a, a digital health company. Um, and so which, they, which they one did both you do put first? money in, and what then we the, had a. Which one did you do first? I'm just curious about the we did, chronology. We did 500 startups first. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and 500 then startups was the Launchpad first. Digital. Yeah. And where's Launchpad Digital? I'm not too familiar with them. They're in San Francisco as well. Uh, they're about five blocks from 500 startups. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, so th those two were, were really great programs to be part of. Um, and those, you know, taught us and allowed us to get a lot of uh, great exposure and also, uh, you know, improve our metrics and so that we could raise money from, uh, you know, angels and, uh, friends and family. And then we also raised some money from, a, a fund that basically has a development offshore development 
uh, component. So uh, they expect you to uh, spend development dollars with them. So you put money in and then you pay them. And so they, they have this model where they're trying to uh, give projects to their, you know, off, offshore um, development team. So we, we raised some money from them as well. Hmm. And I think it netted out to about 1.1 million total, roughly. So that's, uh, so I want to unpack both of those a little bit. So let's take this last one first, the offshore uh, development fund. Um, was that, you know, I've, I've heard of this before. I've never known anyone to do this. And in, in sometimes I've heard founders uh, get approached by groups like that. And I've always been a little gun shy. Like it sounds like kind of a marketing marketing campaign. I mean, how did that work out? I assume they're giving you money, they're getting equity. And then part of the terms are you're, you're putting that money right back into paying them. So I guess it's kind of trading services for equity when you net it out is that accurate yeah i mean it was a little it's a little different than that um we actually met them through uh launch festival i'm, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, jason uh, calacanis uh launch festival he does a bunch of them in in the bay area um and we had presented there a couple years ago and then we presented there last year and we met this company which it, the name escapes me right now, um, but they approached us and they said, hey, you know, we like what you're doing. Uh, we invest up to, I think it was 50 grand or 100 grand. I, I, I don't remember, but I think it was 50 grand. And, um, but, you know, what we want you to do, and it, it's a gentleman's agreement. It's not, you know, in writing, but they want you to spend some of that money uh, uh, with their development team and we had ne we needed development um, on our website and they were really good at doing that and so we had a bunch of projects in the queue and we're like okay well we could either hire people here or we could farm it out to these guys and they you know they did a pretty good job I mean they were, they were okay. you know they, it wasn't you know we, we kept the architecture here. We, you know, we, we knew what we wanted and it was basically, it was an update and an upgrade to what our website already was. So it, um, it worked out really well. And, and, and they were great, great to work with. And, you know, it, it was, it was a legitimate deal. I mean, there's no, you know, it's, it was a standard venture deal or not, not even a venture deal. It was like a standard, um, it was part of our round, yeah, it was part of our round, so yeah, okay. The same terms as we we gave every. Sure, no problem. Um, I guess we did something a little bit similar. I took uh, some money from our law firm's venture fund, and of course, a lot of that went straight back mm -hmm. into paying paying our attorneys who had uh, deferred a lot of work. So it's it's conceptually similar. Um, very interesting, and then. Uh, you know, why did you do two accelerators uh, instead of just one? I mean, you know, what was the thought there? Well, I mean, you know, accelerators invest money. <laughs> and if you need money, then you go where you get the money, right? Because um, we, you know, we, you know, the, the, the landscape of raising money has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Uh, a lot of companies that a lot of venture companies now are looking for product market fit revenue and they just want to be able to literally pour fuel on the fire and yeah. you know accelerate your growth so if you're in a software mobile you know i what i would say low capital intensive type business where you know the infrastructure is done for you the internet's there it's not hard to like if you know a couple buddies to throw something together and kind of get MVP, uh, product market fit, some revenue. You know, there no one's gonna th throw cash at you until you've proven something. And and the two accelerators we went to, that was the model. They're like, you need revenue. You know, you may not have perfect product market fit, but you need some customers and revenue or we don't want to talk to you. And and so 
we first got into 500 startups batch 14 uh, up in San Francisco and that was a fantastic program and we learned a lot and and we were part of their first digital health cohort because they had just okay. started looking at digital health and uh, we were just yeah we were honored to be part of that and and those the lessons we learned there and the network was awesome. I mean, I still talk to my fellow batchmates some what two years later. Uh, so it's just a really you know it was a really exceptional program and you know we had taken the lessons there and grown more revenue and then uh, Launchpad Digital Health came along and they are solely focused on on the digital health space and that's we have a huge digital health component uh you know our business main businesses in in the healthcare system and we talked with them and they're like yeah you know we want to see what we can do with you guys cuz we believe in your model and we believe that digital health is the next big thing and so you know it was just you, you it, it's hard when you're in when you're in the the series seed stage so you're you've got something you cooked up you know in your basement your side hustle, whatnot, you know, and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is so cool. And, you know, you get a little traction. You, you got you to gotta get enough money to build something that actually is going to – could potentially take off. And you'll never get to, like, the A round guys until you're doing, you know, 50K, 100K, 250K, you know, MMR, right? That, that Then they know, well, you know, you're, like, A round type evaluation and and the the math and the numbers are reasonably easy to do they just they need those metrics so that you can get certain evaluations and until you <laughs> until you can get that you know your friends and family and accelerators and you know you're getting it hook or crook you know yeah i think i i recently i think it was yesterday actually that uh y combinators announcing a bio track so maybe you could just go through white combinator too and just kind of complete the, the circuit <laughs> or or you know i'm i'm, I'm teasing but yeah. did you use the demo days the two two separate demo days from these as you know catalysts to get the friends and family in i mean was that kind of part of the strategy or or um or, or put another way, which accelerator actually led to more of the investors that came in on the round, if that's relevant? Yeah, so we we didn't get any investors from any of the demo days that we did. Uh, the only investor that we got directly from a thing we pitched at was Launch Festival. Uh, so, you know, and... and and we had, we had, I mean, the, the interesting thing is it's like, it's hard to correlate unless the guy's like, I saw you at launch. Here's my card. Yeah. <laughs> or I saw you at 500 startups demo day. I mean, we got inbound. Hey, you know, we're interested. And it was mostly like at 500, for example, it was mostly they were looking for, okay, when are you going to do your A round? Uh, and, you know, we, we weren't there yet. And then at, Launchpad Digital Health, since it's you know it was a longer program, it was more like okay, you you need to get the revenue up. I mean, we needed to get yeah. to the 50k, 100k MMR, and you know we're not there yet. So it's a uh, you know it, it, you're in this you're in this interesting zone where it's like okay, well what what kind of growth can you show before you know an institution will be like okay, yeah, we'll 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 start working on an A round. What were your what so. were your metrics like when you closed out your series seed round? Um, and you know, pick whatever metrics are most relevant to you, whether it's revenue or customers or you know some other other revenue. This is this is one of the most useful bits for other founders who'd be listening to this because everyone's trying to figure out where do I need to be before going out yeah. and talking to investors. Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. I, I lost you. Oh, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fuck. 
so fuck 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 that flirt was there then um, and sorry. uh you know he's like hey he sorry i think we had a little pause there do you mind uh just oh, repeating okay. this yeah 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 no problem so when um when we went to 500 startups the amount of revenue we had was pretty marginal um <laughs> in fact when we were uh the first night we were there dave mcclure's there and he's like you guys got a minute to tell me about your company and i'm like oh my god like i don't you know this is one of those things where you're like, I guess I should have prepared for this. I should have known this was going to happen, but, uh. and thankfully I didn't go first. Um, cause I learned a lot by all the people that kind of went before me. And one of the things he said, he stopped everyone. He's like, Hey man, you got to own, own your numbers, own your metrics. And I'm all, okay, well shit. All right. I'll own the metric. And I get up there and I'm like, yeah, we're, we're lab sensor solutions. We're going to change the world. And, our monthly recurring revenue is five hundred and thirty-eight dollars and fifty-two cents. <laughs> <laughs> and he just looks at me and he's like, "High five. <laughs> so um, we started there, <laughs> which was um, minuscule. Um, and you know, over the last you know year or so, we've been growing that to, you know, it varies. It depends on the deal we do, but it's you know between five and ten k MMR. Well, we're sort of not right we're not there at the you know it we're not at the 25 50 you know we we sometimes get there but the way our deals work they're longer it's it's a healthcare is a little bit more complicated when it comes to that type of SaaS model so um <laughs> so yeah so i think you know in order to get her an a round um what's really required uh would be you know MMR in the 50 to 100k range, which we're obviously not there yet, but you know we've got ways to get there, and we're we're working hard to do that. So, um, you know, when we were at Launchpad Digital Health, that had gone up to, you know, went from $500 to like 5k or something. So we 10x'd it, but 10x, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the right path, just we need to 10x more, you know? Totally. Uh, do you do you plan to raise multiple rounds or do you plan to try and keep this lean and mean? Or, uh, and or when do you think you would raise the next round? Or is it purely a function of, you know, when your metrics are, are, are ready? Yeah, it's when the you know you raise the round when the metrics are ready um I, I, there's every venture guy is, and gal has got the number in their head right i mean they want to see accelerating growth and they want to see a certain mmr so they get a certain evaluation and they want to pour a certain amount of money in at the a round and then these are the milestones that you need to hit so you know it would be nice if <laughs> people would be just like, yeah, we like you guys here. Here's some money. Uh, but typically there's a model, the model's well known. Uh, you've got to, you know, when you're in this sort of seed lull, which is what, what a lot of people call it, the, the gap between seed and a, you just got to hustle as hard as you can to get that accelerating to the point where, you know, you can go out and say, okay, yeah, we're ready for an A round. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's uh, close this out with two questions. And I want to hear about your, your book project. But, uh, you know, what was the hardest part of raising that seed round? And what did, what did piece of advice would you give yourself if you could go back in time? Or would you give to other entrepreneurs that are looking to raise that series seed round? Yeah, so the, the hardest part about raising the seed round <clears throat> was that digital health was a relatively new type of thing. And so there weren't a lot of angels, uh, individual investors that had a sense of what it was about. And, you know, traditionally in healthcare, you know, it's medical device and those that takes 
hundreds of millions of dollars to make. And there's, a, you know, there, there was a huge perception of, well, you need FDA approval, which we don't. You need all these things. You're like, no, this isn't, you know, this is Brave New World. This is Greenfield, you know, and and getting over those assumptions and getting over those um, apprehensions was, was a struggle. I mean, you know, I am just so happy that we found, you know, Fred Tony over at Launchpad Digital Health because he's like, I get it. Like, I know what you're trying to do. And I know the steps have done this before. And so we were, we were, you know, the Launchpad Digital Health stuff is just, was a great resource. Um, the, the one piece of advice I would give myself if I, the next time I do this, which I, you know, of course, always want to do next time, um, is there was a great uh, talk and article by uh, Elizabeth Yin, who, who was the former 500 Startups partner down in Mountain View. And she wrote a fantastic um, post, and she would talk a lot about this, about how to raise your seed round and, and how to make it more of a business-to-business -business sales cycle as opposed to the ad hoc nature that we were doing. I mean, because to be honest, I hate to raise money. I really don't like it. It's mm -hmm. a lot of pitching. It's a lot of rejection. It's just a lot of like, oh, can I just send someone? It's, you know, it's like being an author. It's like, hey, I wrote the book and now, oh, I got to promote it. Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, so um, the thing that the, and, and what she said, which was great, she's like, OK, if you want to raise 500 grand, for example, you need to do 100 meetings in five weeks or some or six weeks. There's some like your job for the next six weeks is to raise 500 grand. You need to take 100 meetings and just go yeah. make it happen. Sure. And I just I never approached it that way. And I was always so, uh, you know, I'm naturally <laughs> not a sales guy naturally just like oh you know i'm a technical guy in nature now you know i like i have an engineering degree i'm like oh do i have to go waste my time you know and to be honest she was i mean she's right obviously because she knows what she's doing but the the people that i saw that did that raised money quickly mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. so anytime i would it, it would ever do this again or going out for an a round or whatever it's like my job is to raise money for these five weeks. I am just going to treat it like sales. Like, yeah. And I know you guys do this with the tool, um, you know, your founder suite stuff where it's like, boom, boom. Like, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a, you got to handle it. Like you're a business to business sales guy and just get yeah. after it. <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't agree with too with you more couldn't agree with elizabeth yeah. more i mean that's something we yeah. we do a webinar about twice a month called hacking your Round, and that's a lot of the focus of it is think of it as a numbers game think of it as a funnel yeah. you're building a funnel yeah. and you're pushing these prospects through the stages of your funnel and you have to pretty much treat it like a full-time job if you want to get it done so it's yeah, yeah it's, it's good advice i think so all yeah. right I promised to give you some airtime. Tell us about your book. You recently came out with a book. Uh, yes. Tell us about it. Um, tell us maybe why you wrote it and what it's about. Yeah. So uh, the book is called The Entrepreneur Ethos. It's available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. Uh, and I wrote it because I wanted to uh, basically explain to the world what my ethos was about being an entrepreneur. And it was inspired by a bunch of bunch of, of people, and there's a, a a bunch of reasons. But what it came down to was when we were at like 500 startups or at Launchpad Digital Health, you know, there's a lot of younger entrepreneurs that would come up to me and my my founders because we were a little older. You know, we got the gray hair, you know, we, you know, been around, and uh, they would be asking us these questions about, you know culture and mindset and you know how do you deal with reject i mean all of these things that you know we may not have had a perfect answer for but you know I mean, we've been around the block you know i've, I've raised yeah. money before you know i've been at six companies it's like i kind of know the drill right and and so what i realized when we were at these accelerators uh is that there were there was no resource for the internal development of an entrepreneur 
Like, mm. how do I just become a better entrepreneur? Not how do I growth hack to 50K MMR, how, not how I go find an investor, not how I go market my go to market strategy, not how I figure out my one metric that matters. You know, not that I, you know, whatever it is, like pick your favorite external growth hacking type thing and how do I build, what stack do I use, right? Um, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't really find a lot of that. Uh, and so what I realized was that, hey, you know, this should, I, one, I should write something about it. I've, I've, I've have 20 years of experience doing this. Second, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, so I interviewed, you know, 50 or so. Not, not all of them made it in the book. And, and then the other thing is, is that I, I was seeing a lot of trends that started, I mean, I started the book, what, two years ago, and all the stuff that's coming out now with all the harassment mm -hmm. and, and the, you know, misogyny and, the, you know, excluding minorities and women and the just complete, you know, discrepancy between who gets funded and just all this bad behavior, you know, was starting to bubble up. Like, I mean, it's been there, but I mean, it was really yeah. starting to, to happen. You know, it, it, it really, you know, came to the forefront when, uh, that woman, uh, Uber engineer, which I, her name escapes me, Fowler. you know, Susan put Fowler. out that medium post and it just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, that was one spark. And, and then it was the, the partner at Kleiner Perkins, you know, even though she lost the lawsuit, it's like, oh, you know. You know, this this is the catalyst. Is I mean, the momentum, the the wave is happening. So, yeah. I I really feel that as a community, we need to raise the standards and the bar. And I think that having an ethos is what we aspire to, as opposed to ethics, which is the minimum. In my mind, the minimum. So, I decided, hey, this is what I think, and I would love people to comment and, <laughs> you know, like, hey. Hey, you're wrong. You're right. I like it. I don't like get the conversation going. Let's make let's make our community better. Is is what I'm trying to say. We we just can't focus on how much money we raise. Are we a unicorn? You know, sure. are you part of the PayPal mafia? Blah 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 blah. I mean, like that's great, but you know, as 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 entrepreneurs, we need to develop ourselves and we need to hold the high standard. So that's why I wrote it. One more time, uh, give us the title and where where uh, listeners can find it. Sure. It, it's called The Entrepreneur Ethos, and you can find it on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> as as one would expect. Yes. Very good. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as one would expect. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, and this is great. It's uh, fun to hear different strategies for, for raising capital. Um, so I wish you the best and I'm sure I'll see you around Founders Network. Um, Kevin and, and gang is doing good work Absolutely. over there. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Absolutely. Great conversation. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Take care. Thank you.